Okay, hey guys, welcome to our Monday night Zoom. Uh, oh, Sandra says we and two go to dinner early. We went to dinner early because, oh, well, thank you, Sandra. So you guys, it is Sandra's birthday today and she actually did her birthday dinner around the Zoom so she could be on here. So that has dedication for sure. Natasha says, don't mind me, I have to feed my face. Oh, oh, you just worked out. Good job, nice, nice. Um, okay, it's the 18th of January, holy crap. Like, I don't even know where the time is going, but it's going. So tonight I'm gonna to talk about um, what I'm gonna call the three C's and only because when I was making my notes today, I was like, wow, they all start with C. I'm gonna talk about connections, commitment, and um, communication. So I made a post earlier today in the team page. I don't know if you saw it or not. It's actually a quote from Grant Cardone. And he says, you're not in the cash business, you're in the connections business. And when I heard that the other day, I was like, yeah, that just like smacked me right upside the head. Because we talk so often about if you get focused on the volume, if you get focused on the numbers, that you are going to freeze and you're going to stop doing what you need to do because you're going to be focused on the wrong thing. Whereas if you just constantly stay focused on connecting, whether that is you connecting to someone or you allowing someone to connect you to someone else, or maybe you connecting to people, if you think about it, the more connections you can make, the stronger your business will be, not just because you're going to find new customers necessarily, but because you are going to become the thrive person, right? The thrive, the thrive girl and TJ, I think he's, hi TJ. Um, so you're gonna become that thrive person. So I think the first focus of every day in our business needs to be connecting to people. And I know we talk about it a lot and we talk about reach outs, but I think sometimes we overcomplicate it when in reality, all we have to do is make connections. So it's almost like wheeling and dealing. It's like what, um, I think people shy away from this because they start to think, well, that's like the whole attitude of, well, I'm going to connect to Sandra because what can Sandra do for me? And that's bass backwards. It is, I'm going to connect with Sandra because what can I do for Sandra? I'm going to connect with Lisa because what can I do for Lisa? So for example, let's say that um, Olivia is brand new to the team and I connect with her and she starts talking to me about, um, maybe she has to homeschool kids for the first time in her life and she's not really sure how to do that. I can connect her to Sandra because why Sandra was a kindergarten teacher. Right, you see like when you start connecting people, you, you become like the person in the middle, like you're the glue that keeps everyone together. And what happens when the shit hits the fan? Everybody goes to where the glue is, right? Everybody remembers who is the glue. So that sweater is fabulous. What am I missing? Whose sweater is fabulous? What am I missing? My sweater? I'm so lost. Anyway, <laughs> what I get for reading the chat. Okay, but so what I want to point out to you is when I was talking to Olivia, and she was my, my fake Olivia, although she's real, and she was struggling with homeschooling her kids for the first time, my brain went to who could help with homeschooling? Oh, a teacher and a teacher of young kids, Sandra. Because why? Because Sandra spent years of her life being committed to being a kindergarten teacher, right? Everybody knows that about her. Everybody knows she, this is what she did. This is what she loves. This is what she knows. How many people, if someone came to them and said, man, I just don't feel great. I am run down. I don't sleep well. I want to lose weight. I want to start feeling better. How many people would immediately in the back of their mind go, I know exactly who can help you. I've got this girl or this guy. How many of you are so committed to your business and what you do in this business, which is help people feel better, right? How many of you are so committed that you don't shy away from what you do? You don't shy away from how you do it? That when somebody speaks of not feeling well or wanting to lose weight or get in better shape or, um, you know, have a better immune system, whatever, how many people would immediately be like, yep, Sonia's the girl. I know for a fact because that is what she does. She is committed to helping people feel better. So if you want to make connections, you also want to be connected. You want people to think of you when they're making connections for other people, right? So if you want to be someone's connection, you have got to be so committed to who you are, what you stand for, and what you do. Case in point, and no one on, and I'm not 
just, I'm looking at the screen. I'm not talking about anyone who's on here right now. This is actually a promoter on our team. She doesn't do Zooms and stuff. And this will explain to you why in a minute. She is adorable. People love her. She does stories all the time on her social media. And one day she'll be talking about a restaurant. And then the next day she'll be talking about a craft project. And then the next day she'll be talking about this new website she found. She literally just shares all these random things. And I tell her all the time, if you would just put half of the commitment into that, the time that you're talking about other people's businesses into your own, you would be selling some Thrive. Because people, people cannot watch her stories and not know, they don't know exactly what she's about. She's kind of all over the place. So if you make it your commitment that you're always about helping people, helping, helping, helping people feel better, sleep better, um, lose weight, take care of themselves, up their immune system, all of those different things fall under your umbrella. It's when you shy away from what you do. It's when you start to dabble on social media and for one week or two, you talk about your business, but then you kind of backpedal because you don't want people to think you're salesy. You don't want people to think you're just out for the money. When you backpedal and you take away your commitment to what you do, you, you are pulling from your own paycheck. So I want you to think about that. The next time someone says, what do you do? Or you hear somebody say, I, you know, my friend doesn't feel good. She's her, her muscles are always tied or whatever it is. When you shy away from saying, I have something that can help them. Remember, you just pulled from your paycheck. You either add to your paycheck or you take away depending on what you commit yourself to. And I think a lot of times people are struggling with this, this, I don't know if I'm a good promoter. I don't know if I could do a good job at this. I, I don't either. I don't know either, but I know I'm fully committed to helping people. Like that's what I do, whether I'm trying to help my team, help my clients or help my customers. Right. And so you guys can have day jobs that have nothing to do with healthcare, but this is also a job that you have that you love, right? You love it. And you're passionate about it because you know, this product helps people and you want to use it to help people. So I need you to be so committed that anytime somebody is trying to make a connection to help a friend or a neighbor or a coworker or whatever, that you pop into their head. Now, how are you going to do that? You have to communicate. You absolutely 110% have got to communicate what it is that you do. Now, you know, I'm not a fan of a buy my thrive post. You know, I'm a fan of building relationships. You know, I'm a fan of, of um, really getting to know people and what it is that they need so that we can help solve their problems. And how do I do all of that? I communicate with people. I talk to them about everything under the sun. Tom was teasing me today because he walked into my office. And I guess if you just walked in and saw it, this is what it looked like. I was going through my friends list on Facebook and I scrolled and I would drop my finger and whoever's name it fell on, I had to send them a message of some sort. He was like, what the hell are you doing? I'm like, I'm talking to people right now. I need five minutes. Um, but legitimately, that's what I was doing. I set a timer and I was just talking to people. I would land on their name. Even if they were already a thriver or they were a promoter on the team, I still talk to them. Why? Because the more people I talk to, the more people are going to get to know me, the more people are going to know what I'm committed to, and they're going to be able to connect people to me, right? So whether they connect someone to me for my Lavelle business, maybe my fitness for you business, or hell, maybe they want their garbage bin clean this spring. I don't know. But people need to know that I'm out there and what I do for a living. So I want you right now, this very second, how many people, you don't have to say it out loud, you're going to know the answer in your head. How many people have you connected with today? How many people did you communicate with today? Directly. Don't say you made a Facebook post, right? How many people did you communicate with today? That number will have a direct reflection on your paycheck in four weeks. Not tomorrow, in four weeks. And, I, and it's 7.40 at night here in Ohio. So we've all had a pretty big chunk of our day. We've had time to connect to people. We've had time to talk to people, right? So when you are talking to people and you're communicating with them, what is it that you love so much about this gig that keeps you here? What is it that has you on a Zoom on a Monday night? And first of all, do not shy away if the answer to that is money. There is nothing wrong with making money while you help people. What do you think doctors do? 
People flock to freaking doctors. They don't do that shit for free, right? I've never gone to the dentist and he's been like, you know what? I love my job so much and I feel so bad about making money doing it. I'm not going to charge you. Never. I wish I'd have a lot more money in my bank account if they would. So if you're here to make money, that's okay. You can be passionate about making money by helping people feel better. Helping people is why money is second. I like it. Oh, I love the analogy of writing that down. <laughs> yeah, there is no, I mean, I've said this before in other times, I, I, and I don't know if this is a, a majority of a female thing or if it's a network marketing mindset. I don't know any other job where people apologize for taking a paycheck. I, I don't like people live for Friday to get their paychecks. But somehow in network marketing, everybody hangs their head. They're like, oh, I can't. I know, I know. I sold you some stuff and you feel amazing and changed your life, but I feel bad taking money for it. No, you earned it. Edie, I reached out to a girl who works in a LASIK office because I want LASIK even though I already have a LASIK employee. Oh, see, making connections. Yeah, so, so, it, so why are you here on a Monday night? Are you here because you're earning money to pay off debt, to do whatever with? Are you here because you felt so good you couldn't imagine not telling people about it? Are you here because you think it would be awesome to have um, a team of your own that you can build up and that you can help change their lives? Let people know. So when you talk about Thrive or you talk about your business and what you're passionate about and you communicate this with people, again, I'm not up there throwing up every day, buy my Thrive, buy my Thrive. I will throw up 24 hours a day. I love my team. Be strong, be independent, make your own money. You guys know, you follow me on Facebook. You know the things I talk about. I mean, I made a post the other day. I'm pretty sure it was just my face. And I said, I help people feel better. I just flat out said, this is what I do. Some people might be confused. Does she sell it or just take it? Did her, did she buy it from her friend? Does she just get like free product every now and then? Like how upfront with people are you that this is your job? Or are you hanging your head because you're making money on the side because you're helping people? Like, I'm not trying to make fun of anybody, but I want you to hear that. What does that sound like when I say that? Oh, I feel so bad that I made money this week because I helped somebody. Oh, I should probably give this money back to Paul and Jason. Uh, no. No, I'm cashing that check. Thank you. So for real, like either unmute or put it in the chat. Like if I went to your Facebook right now and I scrolled through the last two weeks worth, would I have a clear understanding of what you believe in? Would I know that you think it's okay to make money? Would I know that you think it's amazing to help people feel good? Would I know that you, would I, would I be like, you know what? This person is really building a business to get their family where they want them to go. This person is really building a business to leave a legacy. This per, like, would I know this? Does this person love this product so much that they, that they like, they, all they want to do is help people get it any way, shape or how? Like, what would I, what would your Facebook say to me? What would your Instagram say to me? You have to communicate what it is that you do and that you love. I mean, think about the people you know on social media right now. If somebody said to you, um, my cat doesn't feel good. I bet all of you know a vet tech or a veterinarian that you're connected to on Facebook, right? If somebody wrote down, um, my kid is struggling in reading class, I bet you guys know teachers. There's a perfect example. What do teachers do all day? They help children. Good Lord, can you believe they take a paycheck for that? Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, come on. They do not, I mean, I love teachers, first of all, because they will be straight up and be like, you know what, this job is hard. We don't get thanked enough and we sure as hell don't get paid enough. Like they don't even shy away from that. So why can't you not, we do get paid really well, by the way, but why can't you be like, you know what? I love this job. I don't get enough credit for the fact that all I do all day is try to help people feel better. Screw you people who think I'm out stealing money. Like just put it out there. What are you passionate about? Communicate how you really, really feel. Because when you leave little hints and little openings and maybe kind of pussyfoot around what it is that you do, that's where you leave those pockets for the bullies to come in. I can tell you very honestly, I 
make posts about Facebook bullies, but I do not get Facebook bullied. I don't, I don't, there's no room in my day. I leave no room on my Facebook or my social media for people to bully me. Probably because I already tell them how I would respond in a lot of my posts. I'm going through Erin King's social media spa and she talks about telling stories and sharing your life. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sam. Yes. Stop whispering in a loud world. We talked about this, I think, last week where we were talking about Aaron Aponte's, um, I think it was a Facebook Live, I can't remember now, or YouTube, but he said, and I loved it, stop whispering in a loud world. There, Because if you think about it, I bet you guys know a lot of people who either sell Lavelle or maybe they're into Beachbody or maybe they're into the pink stuff or whatever. Like there's a bunch of people out there that kind of sort of dabble and do what you do, Right? Well, when you want to actually change your health, do you want to be with someone who dabbles or someone who does it? That's what I want you to remember. When you're making your Facebook post, I'm not saying you got to be arrogant and bitchy or whatever, but be confident. You are with the number one health and wellness company in the world right now. Like that's it. It's a pretty cool place to be. We have all kinds of new stuff coming out. And even if we never had anything new come out again, you have the three steps. Everybody on here knows like how powerful those have been to change your health and your wealth. You can not only help someone feel better, but you can help their financial goals. That's a pretty amazing gift that you have to give to someone. So don't shy away from that gift. That's like, you know, like, you know, somebody who's like an amazing singer and they're petrified to sing. And like, they, they'll only sing in the bathroom. They won't get on stage. They're just like, oh, and you're like, oh my gosh, you could be the next Carrie Underwood. But they're like, like totally frozen by it. That's you. You guys could all be the next Maria. Don't be frozen by fear. Don't be worried about whatever it is that you let fill your brain during the day. Wake up, recommit every morning to what it is that you do and love. Make it your goal to connect people all day, every day. When somebody, when you talk to somebody, let's say somebody says something to you like, hey, what's up Thrive stuff about? And you put them in a three-way chat, you give them all the information. They're like, oh, okay, cool. Not right now. So many of you will put your tail between your legs or you'll start getting defensive. You're like, oh, she said not right now. I can't believe that. I'm going to need a different three-way chat. I'm going to need somebody else to talk to this girl. This girl is out of her mind. She has said no. How about you just thank them for their time and let them know that you love what you do. And if they, if they come across someone who needs help, that you would love a referral from them. Like this is business. This isn't like tender hearted stuff, right? This is just flat out business. I, I'm a big fan of like having a why. And I know people say your why should make you cry. I think your why should make you want to shit your pants. I think you should be so frightened. Like to me, my why. So for example, back in the spring when we had to close down and we started this new business, people were like, why are you starting a new business? To pay our damn bills, people to stay afloat, to have something that's ours. We don't wanna go work for anybody else for any other reason, right? So many of you had sales like never before in March and April of last year, because why? Because it was it, was, uh, it was it, that's all you had. So when you're in that moment, when that's your why, like when you really get down to it, that's your why, that is what will push you to go, right? Maybe all your bills are paid. Maybe you have no money woes whatsoever. Well, hopefully if you're in that position, you have goals that go back to giving to other people to where you will still push yourself and you will still work for those things. You got to be committed. You got to recommit every day to connecting to people. And just remember, don't burn bridges. When somebody tells you no now, that's fine. That person who says no, maybe, I don't know, let's just pretend that their name is... I don't know, Sally, you know, I always pull on Sally. Maybe Sally told you no. Maybe Sally's not telling anybody, but she's maybe dealing with a cancer diagnosis. But Sally has six best friends and she went and told them all about you. Yeah, I know, poor Sally. But maybe she went and told them all about you. And one no could have turned into six yeses. But if you were shitty to Sally or you stopped talking to Sally and you cut her off or whatever it is that you guys, we all go through when somebody says no, you've just disconnected yourself from six people. So always remember, even if someone says no, they can still connect you to someone. Always. I'm, I'm just naturally, um, I don't know, I like to connect people. <laughs> so to me, it's very natural to be like, yeah, so-and-so knows this and they can help this person and let's barter and we can do all these things. 
So keep that in your mindset. What are you committed to? Are you communicating on a daily basis what you're committed to? Like strongly communicating. Don't like whisper what you do or him haul around what you do. Like what do you do? I would love, this is a challenge. Don't all do it today because, you know, people be like, oh, they got a challenge. I would love to see every blue moon. You guys just put a, a picture of your smiling face and it says, I help people feel better. That's what I do for a living. I make money helping people, whatever word you want to use. Like be bold about it. How is anybody ever going to order from you if they don't know that this is what you do? I don't get upset when they say no. It's just trying to figure out what to say after the no. Um, I mean, I, here's, I always go with, if I tell someone no, because I'm, have you guys ever told someone no and they won't take no? And you're like, oh my God. So up to this point, like sometimes you might think that somebody is really like trying to be helpful and they're trying to find the right thing for you and it's just not working out. And so you're like, ah, thank you, but no. And then they keep trying and they keep trying. And then you're like, wait a minute, why won't they let this go? We've already said it's not going to work. Oh, now they're after my money. That's when it becomes that awkward moment where you do seem salesy because you're chasing someone. So when someone says no to me, I'm like, you know what? No problem. I'm always here when you're ready. In the meantime, if you come across somebody that might be hurting or that might be, you know, whatever it was we talked about, some, some, uh, somebody that might be wanting to lose weight, somebody who might be not sleeping well, let them, you know, will you give them my name and number? Like, will you let them know I have something that can help them? And you just leave it like that. You always want to leave on a high note. Okay, I go back here. Being bold is what helped my business grow this year. Yes. I have friends who always say no thanks, but she's always tagging me in her friend's posts. Yes. Yes. She's never given me a reason for her no, but one day I'll get the balls to ask. You know, every time she keeps tagging people in your Thrive post, that's just your opportunity to sign those people up under her. And before you know it, she could be thriving for free. Maybe money is truly her, her worry and she doesn't want you to know. But she obviously thinks you're fabulous because she's tagging people in your posts. I have a girl like that. She's a customer. It took me forever to get her to be a customer. She, every time I do uh, any kind of anything, she tags her friends in it. If I talk about like a three-day trial, she tags all of her friends in it. She has so many orders under her. I cannot get her to switch to promoter. Every time she sends me another person, I, I remind her, this is your chance. You could switch now. She just likes to send people to me. So again, you know, I, that's a connection. That she's got me connected to a lot of different people. Um, yeah, people, when the chips fall, as they have in the past, and I'm sure they will in times in the future, when the chips fall, people need people. Like you guys, it's like a joke. When the zombies come, who do you want on your team? Are people going to know they want you on their team? Do you tell people what it is that you do? Do they know you're a strong person? Do they know that you take the time to get to know people, that you've built relationships and that you can have like your problem solver? If that's all we are as promoters, we're just problem solvers. I don't sleep good. I got something for you. My head hurts all the time. I got something for you. I need to lose weight. I got something for you. We're just problem solvers. Do people know that's what you do? Because I want problem solvers on my team. I want you guys to think about this when, you, you, when you're making your posts, when you're doing your lives, when you're doing your stories. Like, uh, you know, obviously we talk, well, here's another C. We obviously talk about consistency a lot. We talked about that last night on the power plan. If you missed last night, it was a good one. It was just the, just consistent intentional activities to do every single week to get your business built. Um, tonight is more about like representing who you are publicly, like not shying away. When someone says to you, what's that thrive stuff? I know every last one of you are like, uh, uh, like you get that panic moment, right? Cause somebody just asked you about it. Practice. What is that thrive stuff? What's that thing on your arm? Best shit ever. This was a game changer for me. This rocked my world. Like whatever it did for you. I don't want to put words in your mouth. But what did it do for you? They're, they're not, a, they didn't ask you what the ingredient list was. They didn't ask you if there were patents on it. They didn't ask you if you were a scientist. They just said, what's that sticker on your arm, right? What's this Thrive stuff you talk about? Be, be bold, be brave. Like, you know what you're, you're here. You are a promoter on a Monday night on a Zoom. You love your business. You want it to grow. That's why you're here, right? Or maybe you're watching the replay. You took the time to do it because you want to grow a business. 
do people know what you do? There are people on the, um, on the team who have pr promoted less than me. And I bet if we went to their Facebook pages, you would get a, you would get a clear indication that they are a thrive promoter because they probably talk about it a lot more because it's new and exciting for them. Right? No one's questioning what they're into. Tara, my answer is the last, the last thread of my sanity. That's good. Laura says it's a life changer. Yes, ma'am. Candace, I just don't know what or how to say things to new people. New people as in like new people on your team or just new, like new customers, people asking you questions. I'm going to guess you mean like new people as in like potential customers. Um, I would say get in your back pocket, like a one-liner, like how um, Tara said, the answer is, you know, when somebody says what's on your arm, the last thread of my sanity, potential customer. Okay. Like have that. And then you can even say, I'm still really new with it, but it's like totally changed my world. It's the best thing ever. And you, I, I can send the information and then put them in a three-way chat. Nobody on this team has to know every single answer. All you have to do, all you really have to know to do to be successful is know how to put people in a group chat or group text. That's it. That's as technically challenging as we get around here. So I would definitely have a one-liner. Like it, So it's done something for you. It's made you feel good. You know, somebody could say, oh, this is how I sleep at night, or, oh, this is how I stay awake during the day. Like whatever it is that your, your DFT, your, your Thrive is done for you, have your one-liner and then just say, you know, I can, I can get information to you about it. I don't know everything about it, but I know somebody that does. I can get you information and then just put them in a chat. Let somebody else handle that. Let, you know, let whoever else talk to them for you. You'll eventually start to learn all the answers, which is good because you'll eventually have a team under you and they're going to make you answer those questions. <laughs> But you don't have to know all that stuff right now. Anybody have any questions, any thoughts? Does this make sense? We're going to connect with people. We're going to be committed. Like, I want you to be so committed that when somebody makes needs to make a connection regarding someone that needs to feel better, you are the name that pops into their head. Like you, you and you guys all know what I'm talking about. You know that there are times when somebody says, oh, I don't know how to do this. And you're like, you know what? I know somebody that does. And you think of that person. I want you to be that person that someone thinks of because they know that's what you do. And they're only going to know that if you communicate it, you have to communicate it, you have to be committed to it and you have to connect with it. All right. So that's it for tonight. Thanks for being here. Sandra D. Happy birthday. Thanks for being on. Um, if you guys need anything, let me know and I'll see you next week. Bye.